Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 307 of the Constantly Calibrating Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Josh Silverman, joined by my co-host, Justin Stanley. Joining us hey. today, I always do that. I always interrupt you with the hey. There's always just enough of a pause that I that I botched that. Jo- I mean, I really have nothing else, so. Hey, yeah, because that, that works. Uh, joining us this week, we have Pedro Esparza. Uh, Pedro, uh, it comes from us uh, from MC Pro Hosting and a slew of other things. We're going to talk about a lot tonight. Pedro, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing pretty good. Not too bad, man. Like I said, just riding, uh, riding this uh, con guck that I got from DreamHack. Uh, it was a lot of people that I came in contact with, so I'm still, I'm, I'm about 90, 98% good. Uh, I still got a little 2% lingering here and there, you know? 90 percent's not a bad percentage to be. Yeah, I think I'm like I'm not rocking somewhere like the 98 5, 99 5 percent back to normal. I got I, I I was feeling okay before Thanksgiving, and then I dipped back down again a little bit. Yeah. But uh, yeah, two people always are like, ah, eh, you know, you sometimes after a convention, you're sick maybe a week. It's like nah, depend the, the right or in this case wrong convention. Two weeks later, it's still uh, beating the hell up out of me. Oh yeah, and and your body goes through such a shift because at least for me, anyways, I I'm I'm more of a more of a morning morning person, so I wake mm-hmm. up at like you know eight or nine, and then I'm usually done with my responsibilities at around seven or eight. Now, when you're in convention mode, I'm you know going to bed at like four or five in the morning, waking up at nine because my body still wants to wake up at that time. Mm-hmm. I still have like things to do, and so like you're just going through this hard shift. And uh, and schedule, but it, it, I think that on top of like crappy con food and just being in contact with so many people outside of your normal routine just really beats you up. Oh yeah, I mean absolutely. I mean, just uh, I was gonna say like my schedule is pretty much I, I wake up bright and early because uh, our 19 month old likes to wake us up bright and early. So, you know, I'm staying up until uh, certain people are keeping me up until like, you know, anywhere between four and six thirty in the morning, almost every single night. And then I mean, that's Eastern time. So that's between uh, in my head, that would be between, you know, two and four something in the morning. And then uh, it rolls around to, you know, uh, six to eight. So somewhere in that range. And my body's like, oh, baby's awake. <laughs> And it's like, yeah. all right, I guess I'm in the show floor and I'm going to eat some uh, some weird quality uh, barbecue from a stall over there. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. The weirdest quality is good for you. Um, I'm trying to figure who is anyone else hearing this static on someone's line? I just heard a little bit of it, but I don't know where it's coming from. I wonder if that might be a urine, just. Yep, that's you. Um, <laughs> I right, mute your mic while you're messing with it. All right, how is it now? Constant static. <laughs> now it's constantly on. <laughs> well, when it, yeah, mute your mic and uh, get it uh, kajiggered or whatever, because that caught me by surprise. Uh, so, yeah, no, so like that post-con kind of experience, uh, it, it's quite an adjustment. Plus, you know, you're shaking hands and hugging people. We're both people doing like business kind of things. So you're meeting a crap ton of people. So who yeah. knows what everyone is exposed to. So yeah, two weeks later, uh, thankfully, things are starting to realign in my body. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But uh, yeah, so it's good to have you on the show. Uh, for those who don't know, Pedro was originally going to be on the show uh, a week or I think the week before DreamHack Atlanta. And yeah. it was just uh, one of those everything that could go wrong will go wrong things. That was when I broke my foot. And all these other things, and I'm just like, I am not in the headspace. I didn't know Pedro, and I'm like, I'm not doing an interview with someone I don't know who I have no experience with in in this body condition. You were lovely right. enough to let us uh, uh, push you back uh, a couple of weeks, and uh, here we are. But yeah, I'm glad. I'm, I'm sorry to hear that you went through so much, man. Oh, it's 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 life. I got I got a Thanksgiving story when we talk about that in a second. But on that note, uh, it actually works out because uh, I like having guests on the episode after Thanksgiving. Last week we had Sky Shows on. We talked about like some Thanksgiving tradition stuff because we had time at the end of the show. And I'm just curious for both of you, uh, you know, if you did anything fun for the Thanksgiving holiday, if that's even something uh, you celebrate. So, uh, Pedro, as our guest, if, you know, what, what was your Thanksgiving like? So, I uh, normally spend Thanksgiving uh, with family and uh, get to go and, and hang out, get some good food. For I'm sure. usually... I'm more of a dark meat when it comes to turkey and 
And, uh, you know, I, I get text messages all week long about making sure that the food's up to <laughs> par, to, up to my standards. Like, like it's, you know, like I'm the one that has to sign off. I, I've never <laughs> like once said that the food has to be perfect or anything like that, but they always like to check with me and, um, yeah, just meet, meet with a lot of friends and family and, um, just eat a lot of good food. And surprisingly enough, I ate a lot more this year than I have in the last like four or five years. I guess I was just really hungry that day. So. The, the planets and the stars were in line with my appetite, <laughs> and I ate this gigantic pterodactyl leg, uh, and uh, it was it was glorious. That's, That's doing Thanksgiving right. Yeah, I mean, that is doing it right. Uh, how about yourself, Justin? What was your Thanksgiving? You have some good food. Oh, great food! Ate too much, like two two big big just really big plates uh, of <laughs> food. I uh, went to my mom's house. Uh, she's a She's far away, far enough away where you don't want to constantly go visit, but close enough where you can make those holiday visits. I get that. Um, but uh, yeah, she, uh, like we usually show up. Like uh, we actually had the whole family there, like the immediate family, which is kind of rare when we all get together. Uh, everybody kind of cooks their thing. Usually, it's my mom and my uh, older sister work on some things. My niece actually made a homemade pumpkin pie, which was amazing. I don't Ooh. like pumpkin pie. Well, I don't like pumpkin pie when it's like. Mrs. Smith's out of the store freezer. No, but like the that. homemade one. Oh my gosh. Like my niece is an amazing cook and she didn't get it from her mom or dad. I can tell you that because neither of them could cook. I don't think she's listening, but whatever. <laughs> yeah. My, uh, my, my cousin is like my little brother invited us out to, uh, Colorado. We stayed up in like Breckenridge, <laughs> this absurd house, just this, just this ridiculous house we stayed in for the event, uh, for it. Yeah, but it was like in the mountains and super icy. And at one point uh, on the drive there, like the car just started going downhill. And we're like, I guess we're just going to ride this experience out and see if we make it to that. <laughs> and it was the, the the wheels lined up and we were able to you know make it. But like there, there was a nice little terror moment on the two hour drive up there. But we, yeah, we got up there, uh, saw some family and stuff uh, on the topic of pie things. My, my cousin decided he would surprise me by making my favorite dessert, key lime pie, except he forgot to show up for the entire Thanksgiving dinner the actual day and made it late at night after a key lime pie had been made. And he may have been a bit high. And um, the thought is what counts, which is, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, is where I'm going to stay with that. Uh, but the over the meal was amazing. My, my wife spent like eight and a half hours solo cooking because she refuses to take help more than like an occasional grab me that kind of moment. So she just made this absolutely amazing turkey and everything else and it, it was a, a highlight of the event uh on the drive home uh two days ago we uh, uh we on the way back to the airport we got in a car accident though <laughs> so oh, no. that was a fun experience uh we were driving back and my wife was going down uh kind of like down and in uh, down and into a roundabout and even though she was going super slow uh, ice and it was there and the brakes didn't engage and we had literally almost 10 whole seconds of I guess we're crashing <laughs> like we were just discussing like we're literally having this, this well I, I was screaming for a couple of times because I was panicking with the kids in the car like yeah. hit the brakes hit the brakes and she's like I, I am they're doing nothing and it's just and we like had a long enough time to have a conversation of should we hit the median should we hit the car next to us should we hit the car in front of us because there was no like uh like we couldn't go off the road into like the grass or something. And that conversation, like just look over. It's like, so how should we crash today? Yeah. It was just enough time where I even said at one point, I'm like, should I film this? That was literally like, because I went into content creator, like preserving just in case, uh, you know, proof that, that the car was not, it's not our fault. I'm like, I, like I went like that long into it and yeah, we hit the car in front of us. And the best part about this is, so we go to the first, uh, we drive the cars off, uh, to the first available place and the cops are already there. And then when they came over to us, it's like, oh yeah, this is actually our fourth accident here in the last 45 minutes. Mm. Oh, geez. They spent uh, I was about to add, like. Was it slow pace? Like, you know, in Austin Powers, when the like steamrollers come in, the dude's like, stop! And it's just taking forever to go there, but you know what's going to happen? In my head, that's what it felt like. It felt like okay. super slow motion. But yeah, I mean, again, like, uh, she stopped with enough distance. So yeah, we were just sliding. We were just sliding at maybe a couple miles an hour. Um, but the oh, cop. Okay, yeah, that's, that's good. That was what I was going to ask you. I was like, how fast were you going? 
when you actually made an impact with the other vehicle. We think a couple more. So, like, uh, the cops came to the car because they were already there. They looked at the person whose car uh, was hit, and they're like, his, he has, like, a chip in his paint. Like, they're like, he has, like, the sliced chip in the paint. The guy just left without saying a word to us. He, he, he didn't give a shit uh, mm. a response. And then uh, the damage to the car we were in, which is a rental, was absolutely negligible, negligible. And the cop was just like, yeah, this is, like, the fourth accident we've dealt with in 45 minutes. You seem like lovely people. We're not going to, like, hinder your drive back to the airport or anything. So no ticket. Have a nice day. <laughs> oh, wow. And it was just, like, surreal experience. Uh, yeah, we ended up returning the rental car, which was, like, one of those I don't one of those rental places. I think it was called Turo or something like that, where it's kind of like an Airbnb thing or an Uber thing. Yeah, it's, where ride, you, it's like a rideshare kind of thing, right? Yeah, it's a rideshare thing. The, uh, the guy gave us five-star review <laughs> when we returned wow. the car, so everything lucked out it was kind of like an adrenaline fueled waste the 15 minutes like the kids were fine um well, nobody got injured the rest of the cars looked like yeah well like uh so we saw one of the accidents was right in front of us we didn't see the previous two but one of the accidents the whole side of a car was crushed in so oh, wow. the people before us got into a bad accident it actually looked like uh the guy before us may have chosen to veer off like into the median and st- or try to turn the car like we were considering Mm-hmm. And, you know, hit the car, you know, in the side into something. So hit th- that car did not look great. Uh, they were still dealing with that after we left. Uh, so, oh so yeah. Uh, it looks like we have Shark in the chat saying, who's that beautiful guy in the bottom left? Which I believe is you, Pedro. Is that me? <laughs> That's is that you. Me? Is that Shark? Mm-hmm. Hey, I, I, Shark, what's up, baby? <laughs> Shark's so, always looking for trouble, man. Always. Yeah, no, it's, it, oh, it took Shark long enough to follow the channel. How dare you take this long? Oh, man. To come over Hold here. Hold on, let me, hit that, let me hit that follow, too. <gasps> Boom. A like, guest ooh. following during the show? This never happened. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. But uh, So, anyways, everyone's fine. Uh, it just was, like, one of those ridiculous, stupid things that, like, it's just one of those things to add to the Thanksgiving list. For me, it just sucked because I think, as I said, before we went live, I think it was before we went live, I kind of was dealing with, like, some altitude sickness-y thing, so I'm, like, wheezing <clears throat> the whole entire drive, and then we hit, get into this accident. It's like, great. Thanks, guys. That's phenomenal. But, you know, whatever. Uh, I, I just thought it was really funny. I break my foot before your first appearance, and I get in a car accident <laughs> before your first attempt appearance, and then before the second rematch uh, to bring you on, get in a car accident. And I was even saying to my wife yesterday, I'm like, Angel's bad luck. <laughs> I didn't. She. I, I didn't say that. <laughs> nah, you're, you're. But I'm glad we got the chat. I want to hear more about your story because I want to get to what we're here to talk about. But I want to hear a little bit more about kind of your uh, your journey to where you're at. So, where did you kind of like start in this industry? Ooh. Where where are your where's your origin story? So that's that's a it's an interesting story because I I don't necessarily have a technical background um i actually started getting I, I got my foot in the gaming industry by making uh parodies game parodies and oh, um, shit. <laughs> i didn't know that <laughs> i know yeah like you just wait this is gonna be one of those things where it takes you from me being a game parody maker to being you know, CEO of MC Pro Hosting. It, it, it's, a, it's a little bit of a journey, but I'll try to keep it short. No, I, um, it, you're our guest. I mean, uh, I, I, I really want to see like where this thread gets pulled out to. <laughs> <laughs> so I started making uh, game parodies back in like 2010, 2011, uh, with a big emphasis on doing Minecraft parodies. So sure. back when uh, you know, other creators, like for example, Captain Sparkles were making their own thing, I decided, I was like, I, I could do the same thing, you know? Uh, in, in the same in the same sense of of making parodies, you know, doing my own rewriting of lyrics, you know, to fit the game, and I was using Minecraft as the as the engine to tell my story because I wanted to add a visual aspect to it as well. And I've been playing the game for about a year, then I was really in love with it, and so I started doing that, and then eventually um, I started building my Rolodex of creators that wanted me to do parodies for them. Um, other creators like, for example, uh, Scott is Minecraft th- at the time, um, Ant Venom had a chance to work with, uh, I has Cupquake, Aurelian over on, over at Twitch. I had a chance to work with Lydia, uh, brand ambassador for, um, Mo Yang. So like a lot of really, you know, popular people and, sure. uh, my name kind of started spreading around and, um, uh, I was invited to one of the first Minecraft conventions, like official Minecraft conventions. And. 
I was there um, in 2013 in Orlando, and I was pretty excited. It was it was the first time I'd ever been invited to an event like that. And um, lo and behold, I was uh, kind of looking around. I saw a lot of the creators that I work with, um, and then I saw this guy in a in a suit <laughs> and um, very very sharply dressed suit. Hmm. And I go, I go, who could that guy be? And um, uh, they were like, yeah, you, do you know who that is? I was like, no, not really. They were like, that's James. I was like, okay, cool. He looks <laughs> sharp. So I went and introduced myself. I said, hey, man, my name is Pedro. Um, I make Minecraft parodies. Pleasure to meet you. Um, I, I had no idea like he was, you know, head of MC Pro Hosting at the time or, or anything like that. I was like, you know, uh, if, you, if there's ever anything I can do. And I was, when I said that, I said, from a musical standpoint, like, you know, if you ever wanted to produce like a parody where you wanted to bring some of the creators that you work with and put something together, you know, that, that was my mindset, right? Sure. I was like, what, what kind of service can I bring for you? And, um, and so I said, you know, um, yeah, that, that's fine. Uh, I would be happy I was about to, to say, by the way, content creators, do you write attitude to have? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, so I, I said, you know, if there's anything I can do for you in, uh, now or in the future, you know, feel free to let me know. I'd be happy to chat further. And, and so that was that. And, um, and he was like, oh, okay, cool. You know, he had like so many people around him. I was just like, all right, you know, I I'll chat with him later. And, uh, one thing led to another, we connected on Skype, we started chatting away and, um, then about six months later, maybe it was six or maybe a year later, he just hit me up on Skype and says, Hey, I've got a, um, gaming convention that i'm putting together as one of his uh companies it's called arcadia con he's like i'm putting together a, a convention in fort lauderdale we booked the orange county uh convention center there and um it's like the biggest convention center like in the east coast and uh, he was like we'd love to see if you can help us with this i was like well i've never i've never done conventions but i'm pretty like uh structured and organized detail oriented and i was like sure. you know what this is an opportunity it's 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 you know it, it's easy work. That's what I thought. I mean, you you uh, so you, yeah, you take the opportunity pretty much because it, it was open. Yeah, to you. it's my foot. It's my foot in the door to 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 show him what I what I can do, part of what I can do. And so, um, he goes, uh, yeah, I would love to see if you can help us with this. I was like, yeah, sure. And I did that for about uh, eight months, I think, putting that event together. It took a little while. Uh, it was the second one, and and we had so much fun. It was such a blast. Um. However, at that time, I was having some lower back issues. Uh, I had been in a car accident, be rear-ended, and I had a, a herniated disc that was kind of poking at me. And being be, being on my chair for such a long time was starting to take its toll. And so I said, I was like, James, I had a blast working on this with you. Um, unfortunately, I'm going to have to take a step back because I can't uh, I can't continue. I'm not really giving you 100% at this point. I'm, I got this back issue. Let me take. Let me go take care of this, and then if there's something available when I come, would love to see what else I can do for you. It was like, yeah, understandable. Thank you for your help. Uh, and so I left, and then um, took care of my back, and uh, then probably a year and a half or so later, <clears throat> he came up to me and, and he messaged me. He's like, hey, so um, hope everything's going well. Just wanted to see if you'd be interested in you know running MC Pro Host, and then I go say what again <laughs> <laughs> and uh and he's like yeah so you know we we sold uh we sold beam to microsoft they, they hadn't done the conversion over to mixer yet and um uh you know one of the things that they had to do was they had to migrate their entire team and him and matt the co-founders had to go with it too and uh i said yeah that you know uh, i'd be happy to see what i can do I've, I've never done this before but like i said i've always um i, I don't want to say no but i i I definitely set a clear expectation that I, I would like to get some some uh, some some ground time so that I can get myself familiar with what MC Pro Hosting really is and what kind of uh, where can my skill set fit in with what the mm -hmm. company needs, right? Yeah, yeah. So um, so that happened, and you know, I put together a really good team, and they're all still there now, and and to this day, I, I think that was back in uh, b -b 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 middle of 2017. So been there since uh, 2017, 2018. We're about to wrap up 2019, uh, and it's been it's been an amazing journey, and uh, it, it's been tons of fun. I got a lot of the team already here. I think 
Uh, Enectic is here. I think that's Kay Lee, I think I see on the chat as well. <laughs> uh, Gordon from Shot Calls here. Elvis from Tyrus is here. F5. A lot of people I, in uh, in chat here for Pedro. Apparently, yeah. I, I, you know, I did share that I was going to be here. So, um, but yeah, it's, it's been a great journey. I have a fantastic team, so I, I, I cannot. I don't. I honestly don't think I deserve any of the <laughs> any of the glory of of where the company is now and and, and where it was in the past and and, and where it's going um, without the team. So I really uh, I wanted to make sure that they they heard that story because I don't think I've shared that how I got to where I am uh, publicly. This is like the first time I've I've really had a chance to. To share it, so ha ha! Premier um, origin yeah. story. <laughs> hey, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. The game awards are coming up soon. World exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. And so, um, yeah, with, it, it's been such a blast working with James. He's, he's such a smart and talented and young individual. You know, yeah. um, he's he brings such insight from his experiences. You know, bringing up MC Pro Hosting as a whole. You know, from MC Pro Hosting, we were able to find Beam, which turned into Mixer. We sold that. We also have a couple of other uh, ventures, which we'll let. Um, well, we'll talk about these, I, I guess, more in detail another day. But we have also sure. a uh, talent uh, management platform called Tyrus, and that's um, we have someone here from uh, who's Elvis, and then um, yeah. So we're always, you know, uh, trying new things and. Um, Tyrus is our new, is our new, uh, one of our newest ventures. And we're really excited about that. That's all part of what we call the Boehm collective now, Mm -hmm. um, among other, other ventures. And so I think I shared a a little bit of that with you, uh, private, uh, Josh, when we were uh, were talking a little bit more. Yeah. We talked a little bit about it. And then, uh, Elvis has actually been on, uh, the show a few weeks ago in what's we're calling one of the lost episodes because it was literally the anything could go wrong episode where n- just mm-hmm. no audio recorded across like three different sets of things but everyone who saw it live got to enjoy it also mixer deleted the vod it's like literally it was one of those everything that could possibly go wrong things i've been trying slowly to reconstruct the shit to see if i can bring it back it was a good chat though and so it's uh lovely i got to like hang out with you and and him and then get to hear more about this uh some of this stuff privately i was gonna say though you know your description of james and how you first met him is funny because um i met uh because i met james for the first time at dreamhack atlanta but i had seen him for years at events for for years you know he would uh always be like again like the guy in the suit i mean hence his his handle suit james he'd always be the guy in the suy and then uh Somebody one day was like, yeah, that's uh, the guy I found the Mixer. And this was right after I joined Mixer uh, as streaming. I'm like, huh? I should probably meet him. <laughs> and then I'm like, I'm going to go that way. Hand. I'm, I'm going to go that way instead. Because <laughs> just like, the, I don't know if I, I, I think I got intimidated by the quality of suit or something. But uh, finally getting to talk to him, uh, a bunch of DreamHack Atlanta, was it was really interesting. And he's uh, definitely a person I like. look forward to getting to uh, speak to more in the future because just like his experience for you know everything he's done is always it's, it's fascinating to think that you know that he started mc pro hosting um and i'm sure he's he's fine com- comfortable sharing this detail but to think that mc pro hosting started with a seven dollar loan from matt's dad is is a, <laughs> it's a, it's a it's a very scary thing i actually spoke with matt uh, as matt's dad and uh um, amazing guy. He's he, he sounds and looks just like Matt. Such a cool, humble guy. And I had a chance to meet him in Florida because when we were doing the when I was doing that first opportunity for the convention, I went down there and I was like, "What? I'm, I'm gonna tell Matt that I'm gonna I'm in Fort Lauderdale, which is where Matt's from. Let me see if I can meet his dad and meet his mom <laughs> and hang out and stuff." <clears throat> so I met them and and there was such a blast. And he told me the whole story. He's like, "Yeah, Matt came to me." He, Dad, can I borrow seven dollars? And um, and you know, Dad's got like seven dollars for for what? And he goes, it's for a development license for uh, a program called WHMCS, which is um, uh, which is a network client billing platform. And uh, you know, he goes, sure, it's seven dollars, seven dollars, and not that big of a deal, but you know, he, here it is. And Matt takes the seven dollars, and he goes, cool, okay, thanks. He comes back a month later. He goes, look, Dad, I made a thousand dollars with the seven dollars you gave. <laughs> and Matt's like, I think he's like thirteen, maybe or fourteen at the time. You know, 
uh, here we are with $7. We're going to blow it on something stupid. He, he turns around and makes a thousand in 30 days. Like you always hear about that, man. I turned a dollar into so much. You're like, that actually happens. It does. Yeah, it did. And, and so his dad's like, Whoa, wait a minute. What did you spend it on? His dad was like worried. He's like, what is, what, what, where are you getting this money from? So then his dad was like, all right, we need to talk about taxes and what, <laughs> what actually needs to happen with that thousand dollars. So his dad was really supportive from day one, was there to help him, you know, structure the company and, and sign off on the paperwork because he wasn't old enough to sign, you know, any sort of company or anything like that. So sure. uh, yeah, they, they, they both had a, a lot of really good parental support getting the company off the ground. And, you know, MC Pro turned into uh, a huge conglomerate now. And, and now it's, uh, we were able to find Beam and the whole team that was with it. And, and we turned that into, you know, that, the, all that was turned into Mixer. And now we've got other other ventures and, and, and things that we're involved with. Um, but to think that it, you know, it, it technically all started with, with $7 and, 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 the, and the vision of, of Matt's technical background was really smart. But James's entrepreneurial skills was like, you know, Minecraft servers weren't really a thing back then. But but Matt was doing it for free. He was like, I'll, I'll set up your Minecraft server for free. And and James was like, wait a minute, what if we charge him like five bucks? And Matt's like, wait, yeah, <laughs> you know. I mean, that's literally like that. That's such a genius thing, though. Just um, people always say that you know when when some people ask like you know how did you make uh, you know so much money doing things? It's like well, I saw. I, I saw a marketplace, and I literally, you know, I saw a market that that nobody was tapping into, and I tapped into it, and that kind of what it seemed like they did, as you said, like nobody was really doing this, and then they were, and then yeah, yeah. and now that's that's a thing. Like, I mean, Minecraft servers are this massive thing at this point. Yep, and you know, MC Pro Hosting is we're we're fortunate to say we're we're the big Minecraft hosting company out there, and and so. Again, we just go back to that seven dollar thing, and and something funny with that 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 also his uh, Matt's dad told me the company got to the point where you know instead of hosting servers uh, across like data centers and things like that, um, it started with computers in, in their in their family room, mm. and so there was like five desktop top that were hosting like five or six Minecraft servers and. The computers were overloading, and there was one <laughs> that that overloaded a little bit too much, and there was some smoke coming out. Um, you know, some other things to keep in mind is like Matt and James were the ones running the company. There wasn't anybody, so between classes, Matt would stick his head in like the locker with the cell phone and try to like do support and like you know tell his dad like, "Hey, go reboot computer number four or you know, Pat, <laughs> I don't know what's going like." He's trying to do take. He's trying to do support tickets while in between classes and stuff, and it just it was just crazy. Like, and then it just blew up into into what it is now. And so it's it's really interesting to see the, to see the beginning of it. Yeah, it wasn't just like boom. We have you know tons of customers, and that's it. Yeah. It was there was the, you had that struggle and, and sure. to see them both go through it. But I think you know between Matt and James, they both really complement each. As far as the overall scope of a business, they they both bring um, some strong skills to it. So, yeah, and then from there, yeah, they were they were like, "Hey, my my MC Pro hosting is doing. Good. What else can we do?" And so they didn't just kind of sit on their hands and hope for the best. They were like, they they're they always looking for ways to innovate and and bring a new product, just like they did MC Pro. So, um, but yeah, that's kind of my story. And so I've been here for for two and a half years now. And it's been an awesome journey. I'm excited about what some of the things that we're getting into 20. Uh, we just had a really good meeting about it about that today. So um, yeah, that's my journey. I told you I was going to take you from being a Minecraft parody maker to like being head of of, of MC Pro Hosting, and it's and it's been a great journey. So. I know. I appreciate the journey, and I also just I also like some of like the little side tangent about you know the origins of of MC Pro Hosting as well. So hold on. So where am I getting background from? Again. I, Sorry, I'm not. I, I, <laughs> is it you, Justin? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, Justin. I see. It's okay. <laughs> uh, but but yeah. So um, see, what's great is if it is one individual and not just the call. It it, it always can be edited out in uh mm -hmm. in post. So it's nothing ever to worry. You live audiences, yeah. however. Fuck you know. 
<laughs> I hope you all don't the expect noise. all the audacity from my side because uh, it's 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 literally whatever. <laughs> I mean, what was it? Uh, not last week's uh, podcast, but when we did the Disney Plus one two episodes ago. <laughs> Uh, Discord is freaking out on us, and it was just a. It was all the cameras were strobing the entire time. It was. Uh, it, it it was a thing. Joshka, mm. I I don't know what the chat it, the stuff is going on. In the chat, it's confusing me right now. But let's okay. So we have um. So so Pedro, we have like you you gave us this uh origin of uh, kind of where MC Pro Hosting begin. So where mm. is MC Pro Hosting now? Like, what are the services you guys provide? What is essentially like how do you do things as it were so because there's a yeah. lot of places you can host nowadays for minecraft yeah so we have uh we have i believe is 19 locations worldwide that you can host a minecraft server from um it ranges all the way from melbourne to la to chicago uh ashburn dallas uh, london frankfurt amsterdam you name it singapore you know that's just to name a few but um, we have a lot of really good locations, so it fits a lot of uh, our general demographic. Um, the, our big thing with us is that we also offer customized uh, Minecraft servers, so not um, not just vanilla servers, but also things like modded servers, things that can go mm -hmm. way beyond the normal scope of what the game um, allows you to do. And we have a, a really great support team that can definitely support. Uh, any of your crazy endeavors, we have uh, mod pack creators that can make custom mod packs for, for your server. So if you want a little bit of this mod pack, a little bit of this one, a little bit of that one, we can put it together in a server and make sure that it works for you. Um, and so aside from Minecraft, we also have other games. For example, uh, Ark is another one. Mm -hmm. That's one definitely one of my favorite games to play. Um, we also have uh, Terraria and... Uh, uh, Factorio is another game that we like to that we like to host. We got a lot of interesting uh, demographics from those games. Uh, the people that play those games are a lot different than Minecraft creators, but they also need that space so that they can host their games with their friends and stuff. So we have, <coughs> excuse me, we have those um, those games in our library of uh, of options for them. That's cool. Yeah, uh, Justin and I both I forget why got on this like Minecraft because I've, I've played mm -hmm. most of the things you guys do hosting for but minecraft is always kind of like that special place in my heart we got this like minecraft kick like discussion and we were like what if we did um what if we did a server i think i wanted to do sky factory 4 and i was like yep. what, what if we what if we uh did a server with our community and something like that mm -hmm. and we and like yeah we were doing research on it and i was just fascinated because i hadn't really Except in passing once i'd never really looked into the world of you know servers and server hosts and stuff like that and uh, MC Pro Hosting was one that I had actually researched, and I was like, "Wow!" I'm like, I was, I was amazed by, because uh, at first it was like, "Oh, looking into Minecraft servers," and then it was like branched out to, "Oh, wow! All the games you could do this shit with," and it was mm -hmm. just this like fascinating, a uh, whole new world that I didn't even really like think of exploring. I never right. realized we didn't have a community. Shut up! We have a community. Just so I, I reached out to the community in Discord, and I asked, "Does anyone want to play on a Minecraft server?" And got. We have no community interest in Minecraft. It was just me and slightly you. <laughs> that was that. That was right. the difference. My wife was somewhat interested as well. So, which would would have right. actually been fun, but uh, not maybe worth you know X amount of money. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So you know we have a <clears throat> with with all of our different locations, we also have a lot of game options as far as you know where you want to have your server. So, um, with Sky Factory 4 is, is as easy as just selecting that during checkout mm -hmm. and your server is set up right off the gate. You download your Twitch log and pick your pick your mod. You can run your single player client and connect to the server right away. So in probably less than 15, 20 minutes, you can be connecting and playing on your server right away. And I think that's one of those things that really helps us stand out uh, from the competition is the fact that a lot of our stuff is just click and drag, pull down, and then you're, you know, by the time you pay for it, it's ready to go. Yeah, that was what I was noticing as well, because again, I checked out you guys and then a bunch of other different services, and yeah, some would be just like, okay, uh, put everything in your cart and have fun, and others would be like, there would be a little more uh, stuff, but it seemed like uh, MC Pro Hosting gave like the best of kind of both worlds, where it's like, it lets you choose a bunch of different things, but it actually is also like, and here it is, don't worry so much, kind of, was, right. the, was the vibe, it was a, a chiller vibe of the site. 
Yeah, so not not to bash on the competition, but a lot of the <laughs> a lot of the a lot of the other competitors out there set set a very low price, which mm-hmm. is that initial hook. So while we oh, might yeah. we might have a server for like nine ninety nine, someone else might have it for, for four ninety nine, and they're like, oh, you got these guys are so much cheaper. It's like, yeah, but you realize you're missing out on a lot of services and features. Like if you want help, you have to pay extra. If mm-hmm. you want to do live chat, you have to pay extra for that. Everything's if piecemeal. Yeah, mm-hmm. it, it's like a it's like a dollar menu at Wendy's basically. Um, <laughs> whereas like you you pay for a full meal somewhere else, and so you get a lot more bang for your buck. With, um, and I think that's one of the that's one of the key features that helped us stand uh, among the competition. No, I would I would say so because mm-hmm. again that was one of those things where again when I was doing research it was like oh wow this place does dollar fifty servers for like ten people that's I mean why would I not jump at that and then I started actually like reading the fine print and reading things I was like. That's why I wouldn't do that because it's not actually a dollar fifty. That's just the the front mm-hmm. page graphic. So mm-hmm. I, I, as a person, for me, as a person who runs a business, uh, actually technically at this point runs two businesses and then also does a bunch of other things. And as a parent, if I want to play video games and if I want to play video games running a server, I would like to just be able to pay you a a, a larger sum of money and be like have a fucking good time, I'm going to go play video games with my friends versus, you know, actually getting, you know, into the weeds, trying to get every last detail working. No, please take extra money from me is usually my my feeling if I don't, ha- if I can actually just, you know, if it's just turnkey, essentially. And that's that's the definitely the preference. Yeah. And I think that's that, that's that's the big thing with, with us is we're very transparent on our pricing. Usually, if we tell you a server is 9 dollars uh, unless you want additional additional features that won't necessarily um, impact the overall experience, sure. then you're you're fine to add those. Like if you want, for example, uh, if you buy a ninety nine a nine ninety nine server that usually comes with a, a certain player, but if you want more players, you can unlock that. You know, uh, but usually we do provide a pretty high player count uh, at that point. So it, it ultimately, like, if you see that it starts at nine ninety nine, you can have a working server with all of the great features of our support team available at your disposal. We are um, actually providing uh, Discord support now because everybody's using Discord for mm-hmm. you know servers and things of that sort. Um, so now, if you go onto our community Discord, um, you can ask for help. There's a lot of people who have Minecraft servers, just like you and and, and my who can answer questions quicker than if you submit a ticket and you wait for that response to come in. Um, you know, so some, somebody might have encountered that problem has, and has a for it much faster than it takes for it to go through our system, get get answered and, and get sent back. You'll get your answer right away by just being in our Discord and reading up what problems and things people might be coming up with, not necessarily reflecting the ser- uh, service, but more of just Minecraft being buggy as shit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's definitely another big advantage that we have there for sure. Hmm, interesting. I mean, yep, that makes sense. So you you talked about a little bit alluded to 2020 a little bit. Uh, is there anything that you could actually talk about, like the plans going into 2020 for what you all are doing? Um, and if and if not, then we if there's an answer, we could also change it to what's Pedro 2020 look like. <laughs> oh, Pedro 2020. Um, Vote for Pedro. I, I can talk about that a little more. Um, so Pedro 2020 is gonna be uh, really just more focused on himself. Mm. Um, this 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 past two years has been uh, have been great at MC Pro hosting, but I think I need. Um, I need to make a little bit more me time to focus on myself and and uh, and really grow. Um, I guess from a from a personal standpoint, uh, I have a couple of uh, uh, things that I want to take care of as far as the uh, my my lower back again is kind of like mm-hmm. causing me a little bit of discomfort. So I want to get a look. Um, worst comes to worst, it probably means I might be out of commission for like a month uh, while they do surgery and that kind of stuff. I've already had it before. I know exactly what I'm going to go through, so it's not going to be anything out of the ordinary at this point. Uh, but uh, as far as that, I, I just, I really want to, oh my God, the chat is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> the, the chat, the, our chat's been a, been a thing with uh, <laughs> the combination oh, of our I'm, community and you all yeah. coming in. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, I'm just, I just saw a giant penguin just like slide. I don't know if that was a penguin or, or a giant pigeon i can't i couldn't tell i just caught it by the corner of my eye. <laughs> <laughs> uh 
Um, but yeah, so I guess mostly um, really excited about some of the other projects that we're working on with with MC Pro hosting and, and part of the Boom Collective, Collective, mm-hmm. which is just a um, parent company. Uh, we have Tyrus, which is going to be more of a player-oriented management platform. Mm. We have a lot of really good partners that, that we have at MC Pro Hosting um, that do a lot of promoting of our service uh, across their channels or streams. And and so we want to do a little bit more for them. Uh, and I think with Tyrus, we're able to provide a lot of value uh, for things that they may not be receiving in places where they've been promised. For example, um, uh, I'll get into a little bit of it, but... Uh, a creator, for example, doesn't really think about creating a, a business structure with uh, with with it being a creator. They start making revenue. They think they can just put that in the bank and that's it. As I told you earlier, with with Matt and Matt's dad as an example, you know, they had the parental guidance yeah. to make sure that everything was structured correctly. You know, we set up the corporation, set up the company, and that kind of stuff. As a creator, you need to do that. And so, with tires, we're definitely able to provide those services for them. Um, we also have um, a um, a merch company. Uh, it's called Post, and so we're going to be able to work with creators on launching different products uh, and services. Things ranging from like shoes to jackets to the purses to backpacks. You name it. Basically, um, we can customize and make those products for you. So we're creating the the Boom Collective is creating an ecosystem where any creator, no matter what platform you're on, whether it's YouTube, Mixer whatever um we can still provide a lot of good service and a lot of good value for you as we go into 2020 we want to really ramp up those those platforms a little bit more. and we've got a lot of people that are interested and so we're really excited to start working with them uh right away that's i mean that's awesome i mean yeah as you said you know uh it's like you guys are making this like self-contained ecosystem that uh you can just kind of like uh, take all over every branch uh, as needed, essentially, and just kind of build out from there, uh, helping players and you know creators and and whatnot. Yeah, uh, it's, I think that's really cool. I think that's a really cool thing you guys are doing. And uh, if you're ever in need of uh, PR community support, hi. No, <laughs> we might Josh be. We might be looking for a job coming up soon with that. So we're we're definitely. Uh, we're going to be in the need of that. So I think you already, you already, uh, we already spoke about that. So I'll, I know. I'm, I, I'm just, I'm just give. I hey, look. I if I have look, I take opportunities to whore myself out when I'm able to, because it's my wow. show and Dagnam, and I'm gonna do. It. Oh, actually, allow me to whore Justin out if you need IT also, <laughs> <laughs> IT master and uh, PR stuff as well. Uh, constant calibrating. We do a lot of stuff over here. No, <laughs> apparently, yeah. That's I was awesome. supposed to say, yeah, Josh is a big whore, but he already like just admitted it. So yeah, he just step one is confession, right? It's look, step one's yeah. confession. You gotta get acceptance. Uh, Eventually. Yeah, I know. Step one's acceptance. Uh, step two is confession. I don't know. It's something like that. I'm just I just know step who I am. Step three is whore more. <laughs> step three is whore more. I just know who I am and I am just more than happy to discuss and uh, get thoughts out in into uh the world. I don't know where I was I was going in some direction there. But yeah, so uh, if you're, anyone's wondering what uh, what Pedro and my conversations were like over the weekend at DreamHack Atlanta, it was kind of this. Uh, it was exactly this. Wait, mm-hmm. am, am I, wait, is Kevin calling me an asshole? <laughs> oh, no, he's, Who's he uh, calling an asshole? Kevin. Oh, you have, okay, Kevin. he's calling himself an asshole. Sorry. I, I, I just glanced over a chat and I saw asshole. And I'm like, um, excuse me? <laughs> so, uh, oh, careful. I hear you have to work. Oh, he's telling you to be careful because you have to help- work with that Kevin. Yeah, he's, I, 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 I've gathered. I, I understand where we're going now. It's, it's, <laughs> oh, it's, it's an even, it's an evening, y'all. Uh, so, Pedro, let's see. Um, so we talked about Bum Collective. We talked about uh, a little bit about them. Uh, with that, we talked a little about uh, MC Pro hosting, kind of past, present, future. Uh, what else? If people, you know, wanted to know more about you and you do, is there anything else you could think of that would be important to know? important to know or interesting i'm also uh, open for interesting so <laughs> sorry actually, kevin just said this is like dream hack but sober uh <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah i don't remember much of dream hack uh sober so i can't comment there, on there are some gaps there yes <laughs> yeah, there's some, some large blackout gaps um but let's continue but I, on yeah i think uh, as i as I explained to you before i used to make a lot of minecraft parodies actually i have a musical background so i play a lot of uh, uh, a lot of instruments, and so that's actually one up there. Uh, back there, yeah. Okay, I see. Uh, it's a, 
is a saxophone. And so I play a lot of, uh, I play for a lot of wedding bands on the weekends. So it's a lot of fun. Um, just basically go show up, play some music, play things like Uptown Funk, uh, <laughs> you know, feel it still, some Beatles, some Elton John. And then, um, I'm, and it's a really good band that I, that I get to play with. Their name is Mr. Potato Head. And, nice. uh, yeah. <laughs> they actually got a cease and desist from Mattel. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I am so impressed and, <laughs> and amused. But they fought it. They fought it so much because their band's been around for longer than Toy Story's been around. Uh, so they were able to keep the name, but it goes to the grave with them. They cannot transfer it. Uh, or if, if if they if the three of them die in a car crash, that's the end of Mr. Potato Head. Uh, so they can't so break the up the band. Of- they can't break up the band. They can't die all of them. Uh, otherwise, it's just pretty much just ends. <laughs> yeah. I imagine yeah. like actual Mr. Potato Head with a sniper rifle. It's like, I got him sighted. <laughs> I mean, if the... Which, which, is which it, of course, he pulls out of his ass. I mean, that's where everything's stored. Is it Planter's yeah. Peanut that has the really creepy mascot with the top hat? Because I just feel like there's like, yes. the, like the Potato you know, and peanut, peanut collection, you know? <laughs> yeah. Mr. Peanut's classy. He's got a monocle and a hat. Uh, I'll believe Wait, anything. Is Mr. Peanut the hitman? I'm thinking. Mr. I'm thinking Peanut. it's like the Peanut and Potato Collective because they just have creepy mascots that keeps the, that their parent companies keep suing people for using likenesses and names and whatnot. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, but still, but yeah, I mean, it's so, cool. So I, so, I, so I do that on the weekends, and then uh, from time to time, I, I will fiddle around and um, and play a little bit of music uh, on the side, little little odd projects here and there, but. Nice. Um, yeah. So play music, and I, I do have a YouTube channel, and I do a lot of did. I haven't done it in like since I started working here full time, but uh, I did a lot of uh, game covers back in the day. So like Mario covers, and, you know, Zelda covers, and that kind of stuff. It's over Ooh. on a YouTube channel called Music by Pay. And uh, yeah, so, that's I'm not very good with names. <laughs> I mean, it's it's simple, effective, and it gets the point across. I mean, what's wrong with that? <laughs> like, yeah. you know, you 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 cover it. I was just like, I was just thinking to myself. I'm like, you know what? I actually played uh, played saxophone when I was younger. It was two weeks until I found out that you actually have to practice things, and you can't just magically be good at things because that was the kind of kid I was. But I played I, I played tenor sax. It was it was bigger than I was, and it required myself and, and another kid to carry the damn thing around because I was a tiny ass child. And for some yeah. reasons, when I was when I went into a band to audition, uh, for starters, I didn't know when you auditioned for band that you were expected to already know an instrument. Uh, nobody oh, nobody geez. informed me of that one, and I went to audition for drums. And uh, do you know what it's like to audition for drums when you don't know how to play drums and you're like a little white Jew with no rhythm? <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't go well. They're like, how about sax? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, uh, totally found your channel. By the way, this is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, we know what Justin's going to be doing while he's playing Star Citizen. He's just going to switch over the soundtrack to, to some music yeah. by Pedro. Uh, I, I want you to put entrance music to this podcast with something from Pedro's channel. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I do that kind of stuff uh, on the side, too. But uh, yeah, it looks like Dust, Dusty goes shameless plug. <laughs> Dusty's, I, uh, Dusty's my number two over at MC Pro Hosting. <laughs> and uh, he says that was a shameless plug. Of course. It kind of was. Yeah, I mean, why not? Yeah. We're, we're literally uh, t- less than ten minutes ago. I shamelessly plugged myself needing a job. Like you know, it's like we. we this is the podcast for shameless plugs. If you want to, sh- and, and you're our guest, so there's no actual. It, it's completely without shame. There's it's a hundred percent shameless because we. Eh, there's bought, some shame. Okay, there's some shame, but I'm saying you're on our yeah. podcast. I expect you to to talk about your things, and no matter uh, big or small, active not. You, if you have stuff you're proud of, bring it to the show. Love to talk about it. Yeah, uh, but yeah. That other than the music, I think that's that's about it. I, I I wish I had more time to do it, but you know, I I got put got put the bread on the table. So yeah, I mean, I completely understand that. I wish I had more time for writing, you know, like creative writing. Yeah. But you, when you got to make money, and uh, you you got to make money to live in this world. So yeah, you know, you got to do what you got to do. But hey, mm-hmm. there's always hope mm-hmm. that you uh, you find time at some point to you know uh, dabble in those hobbies and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, I think that covers like most of uh, kind of like most of what we really want to talk about. Uh, is uh, any other things, Pedro, that maybe I, uh, Justin, and I missed that you feel 
we should uh we should talk about <laughs> um i don't think so yeah i think uh, we, we talked about mc pros and we talked yeah. about the services we talked about how it came to like, be this is a pretty uh, thorough conversation <laughs> like we've covered yeah. a I, I like it was one of those things where i glanced over at like the amount of time we were recording like this is actually over the short side but i'm like we've actually it's a it's dense but short yeah which hmm. I feel like there's I don't a weird know. Let me in. ask. Uh, <laughs> let's see if, uh, if if anybody from the team is here. Anything you guys want to know? Anything you want? Yeah. If if there's anything in the chat who has questions about stuff, like this is this yeah. is the time to throw out questions to Maybe our guests. Now, forever hold your peace. Or you know, hold it and ask. But shorts, my new yeah. band. Dense but <laughs> short. There was I saw another great band name earlier. Uh, apparently, uh, Dusty is saying to ask you where's Kevin. <laughs> oh my god, that is that is such a weird story. Well, I'll share it anyway. So okay, we had a, uh... <laughs> I didn't know there was actually going to be a story to this. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, I cannot, I can't believe Dusty wants to know about this. So there was this creator um, that was on on Twitch, I think, and okay. he had like twenty thousand people were watching his stream. He decided he wants to buy a Minecraft server. So he tweets it out. Where, what are some good <laughs> Minecraft hosting companies? And so they all start tagging us. And so then he goes and starts sharing his screen to going through the whole process of buying a server. And he jumps on our live chat. And, our, and one of the people that's there uh, is Kevin. And Kevin is he's, uh, he's our, one of the head of support and super nice guy. My God, what an example like of someone I, I would look up to when it comes to just a golden standard when it comes to support. Um, mm-hmm. He treats this guy with the utmost respect. He's like, hey, yeah, if you want to get this server, you need this. If you want to do this, do that. Cool. And so he's sharing this entire live chat on his stream. None of us have any um, that this is all going down until oh. like just a little bit later on. Mm-hmm. And... Um, and so he goes, uh, and, and so he decides to get a server, and he has another question, but he's left the live chat. So he tries to come back to it, and it goes to someone else because we have multiple people running live chat at that time. And so then, then he goes, where's Kevin? I want to talk to Kevin again. And we're Jesus. just like, well, it's not really our policy to transfer um, <laughs> people from one person to another without a legitimate reason. Uh-huh. And so, you know, it's like, well, where's Kevin? And so the entire live chat of like 20,000 people are all going, where's Kevin? Where's Kevin? <laughs> we get tweets. We get emails. We get tickets. We get ev- in every way you could reach out to us. Where's Kevin? Because this guy's is mob following. It's just so they're hilarious. They, they weren't like destructive like other influencers out there but they were just kevin. hilarious it's like where's kevin where's kevin and i'm just and we're on, on discord still we'll get people that pop on where's kevin i was like this was like three months ago i can't believe this is like still carrying on to today <laughs> jeez um, kevin so i need like a collage of every screenshot email oh. but that's your like header on twitter or something <laughs> man yeah, we, need, we need to hire someone and just put put them on 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 uh, on a retention to just every time someone says where's Kevin, it's their job to get if you uh, ever apply for another job, just like, well, my help is support so great, it became a meme. <laughs> I mean, yeah. And then and our, 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 now our chat is also you know with we got Elvis and Chad saying, but where is really Kevin? <laughs> where is Kevin? Is Kevin here? Uh I think so. It's well, Kevin. No, no, I mean I yeah, so uh it's, oh, you, oh that, so Kevin's in here? That's amazing. <laughs> Kev Five is, is the real Kevin, yeah, the legend. That's that's oh, amazing. Yeah. The, the the legend of the story. Now we're talking about di- we got a di- we got a different Kevin. We're talking Elvis. Uh, so ah uh, yeah. So as though speaking of Kevin's, uh, we have a different Kevin asking a chat uh, for you, a question in chat for you. Uh, what advice do you have for people looking to get into the influencer gaming and profession industry, professional industry spaces? Oh, yeah, yes. Kevin. yeah uh, our Kevin's uh, coming at you with a, uh, with a hot one. Yeah, yeah, I see that. Um, what advice do you have <laughs> for people getting into the influence gaming? You know, I, I think the, the big thing is to just do it. And, and I think a lot of people get hung up on wanting to have 
like the right microphone, people mm. wanting to have the right headphones. They're like, I don't have a gaming chair, so I don't want to start streaming yet because I'm going to be, like, you know, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. and they, get, they get caught up in those details. And, and believe it or not, that's actually one of James's uh, str- uh, points of value. He's like, if you want to do something, do everything in your power to make that happen because a million dollar idea is worthless without execution. Yep. And, um, I think, uh, you know, with, with that kind of similar mindset, that's something that's always stuck. With. Um, but with him, um, you know, he, he's always, he's always executing and, and that's, that's one of his strongest, uh, exec- uh, strongest points. Um, as far as anybody that wants to get into the space, yeah, don't get caught up in the, in, in the nitty gritty of the details. Don't give yourself, there's all, there's a thousand reasons to not do something. Um, but just Start with step one. And, and even if I go back to myself, when I was getting into this space, I had a little Casio keyboard that was like that big mm-hmm. and, a, and a little MacBook that was a little bit bigger. And that's how I started. I started just putting out music. And and if you go to my channel, not, again, I'm, I'm not using this as a, if you go to my channel and you look for like the oldest video, there's not even a video. It's just audio and, and, uh, and a still on. image. What is that channel again? Uh, music by Pedro. That's what it is. There you go. <laughs> it's just it's just free music that I made for people because I knew that the well, the only way I was gonna get people to hear me is if I made it for free. And so I started making free music for them to just, and it was just a still image. I didn't know I didn't know squat about video editing, mm-hmm. but I didn't let, but I knew music, so I didn't let that stop me. And I think that's um, you know, oh, is that Zine? Oh my God, the fuck! <laughs> Shut up, Zine. This guy out of here. <laughs> Oh boy! I mean, but that's good yeah. advice. People get themselves hung up all the time on the technical aspect because they, because they 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 hop into a stream. This has been going on for years. People hop into a stream and they just, let's just use like the biggest one of the biggest names. They <clears> hop <throat> in the ninja stream and they see the quality of his camera and the quality of his microphone, all this stuff, and you know stuff that came through sponsorships and all these other things. And like, well, I can't be even a remotely good streamer unless I have the same quality as Ninja. It's like. That's not why Ninja is successful. That 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 does bring attention at this point because of the quality of the stuff. But that's not like what major streamers and major podcasters, and major anything. That's not what uh, what got them to this point. It's their personality. It's their brand. It's what they've created. So if you come into this with no ideas whatsoever and just tech, then you're going to leave that with no ideas and just tech. Um, yeah. One of the first questions people would always ask me in the first like 50 or so episodes of the podcast, we the, this podcast, we were doing a lot of stuff. We were getting a lot of attention. We were getting some guests and people would say like, wow, uh, we didn't do video back. Then people were like, wow, you guys, uh, you're recording, you know, your, your mics, uh, you're doing, you know, you, your mics sound good. So like what equipment should I buy? And I would always just send people a picture of this microphone right here. This lovely Logitech with a frayed wire, single thing. This is what we recorded a two-person podcast on from us 50 episodes. Uh, this oh, really? absolute piece of garbage because what I did was I spent hours editing each episode, learning the fundamentals of audio editing and, learn- and learning how to create some. People always be like, wow, you're using that piece of shit and you're, and you're getting uh, like uh, Rooster Teeth founders you know, back in the day and... All, and like voice actors and all these other people on the show and it's like yeah because do we treat people like people and we actually have conversations and th- and th- that's our, our our brand and our conversations what bring people nobody's listening to us for the quality of the tech the, the quality of the tech comes later once we can actually make money and then eventually i did get hung up on things and <laughs> bought way too much gear at one point once uh, had a little mm-hmm. bit of a windfall of money but still what i always tell people and i still tell people eight years in if you want to do podcasting, come up with the idea, come up with the brand, come up with the direction, because with without that, it, you could spend you could spend the thousand, ten thousand dollars on, you know, all of your equipment, your lighting, your PC, and everything. And then what happens if nobody actually watches you, or you actually even worse? What if you hate being a content creator? Yeah. Well, you are out all this money, and you have no way to recoup your losses. I had that first problem. Which one? <laughs> There's a lot of problems. Oh, I just... they watch me. <laughs> <laughs> I, wa- I I watch you, baby. <laughs> you do. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, no, so I I agree with what you said, Pedro. That it's like you know, don't worry as much about just do the thing, do the thing without worrying it's necessarily like, about the tech. It's yeah. like an eighty to ninety percent hustle too. I mean, why I don't have watchers because I 
I get too tired out. I'm not too consistent. Like it is, you just work at it, keep it consistent. Which mm-hmm. I think consistency is the biggest thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, I think no, that's definitely, I think one of the most important aspects, but uh, any, any other advice you might have Pedro that you want to throw out into, into our, li- yeah. our listeners and viewers. So I guess on the prof- on the more professional side is, is, is read, read book. Um, because I think it's it's super super important to make sure that you are um, are polished in all aspects of your professional career. Um, for example, you know I, I I'm lucky. Like I said, uh, I have a great team, but it didn't just happen. It didn't fall in my hands. I think there was a um, management that I needed to learn. And like I said, I I, I wanted to I wanted to give it a try, but that doesn't mean I can just go in with a blinding mentality thinking it's going to be my way or the high or or I'm going to learn through the bumps and the bruises. I, I think you can prepare yourself and avoid a lot of those bumps and bruises, uh, uh, you know, which means that if you go in here, if you if you if you come into a company that you've uh, that's kind of being handed to you, you want to make sure that you don't just go in there and try to rattle all the cages if you don't <laughs> need to. So, um, you know, things like team management is important. Um, for me, I, I read this book called The Art of the Negotiation. Uh, it's called I Never Split the Difference, and it's an amazing sales book. And I use this on everyday things. Like when I, when I bought my truck, I used that negotiation book to get a really good deal. Uh, when it comes time to negotiating agreements with, uh, for example, if we're doing a, some sort of brand deal with a creator, um uh and they they want like x number of dollars and I, and I'm like I appreciate that but I can only do this you know um this book is called Never Split Difference it was written by an FBI hostage negotiator so this guy would negotiate for people's lives um uh, but he took the same mindset and the same uh approach and and adapted it into a more academic uh platform so that now we can use this for everyday things like you know hassling over um, getting a better deal on a new subscription service for a new product that you want to try. Um, like I said, th- those kind of things. And so like that book, really, that was the first nonfiction book that I've ever read. You know, I- I've read other things that were fiction and they were interesting. Um, but the nonfiction stuff really started to, to to hit me. And again, it all goes back to James because James is just like, hey, you should read this book. It's really good. And I was like, well, I don't really like read books. I watch movies and I do mm-hmm. audiobooks. It, you need to ingest this book, whatever way works for you. And and I got an audio book and uh, it was a great story. I was able to follow along and, and I learned so much. From, um, and then other books, for example, I have a little shelf. <clears throat> um, how to make friends and influence um, and how to influence people. And is a really that's another one that's a really fantastic book. And it, and it goes into like when you're meeting a new person how do you how should you present yourself so that you are interesting to uh and not you know boring and any of that kind of stuff um and then the last one that i just finished uh reading is called yeah, jib jab uh right hook is by gary vaynerchuk he's a really good influence uh you've heard of him oh I yeah I, I, I know i know gary yeah uh yeah <laughs> He's a he's a wild card. He's very aggressive, and I kind of like that mentality. But the stuff that he says really resonates well with um, his key thing is to make sure that as as a, as a member of management, you work for your team. They don't work for you. And uh, if you feel like you're you're pulling the horse, uh, if you if you feel like you're pulling the car, um, then maybe you need to reconsider your position. You need to be you need to be pushing these people, not pulling them, and mm. and and treat them and treat them with respect. Um, don't be afraid to, to talk to them if, uh, if there's something you feel like you can do to, to make their lives better. And I think that's something that I've, inst- um, within myself and, and within the, the rest of the, uh, upper management. So, um, yeah, reading books is, is super, super good. So yeah, Kevin says we read good. <laughs> I, he does say that in here. Yeah, um, I actually just pulled up the, the first book you mentioned, the negotiation book, and I'm I've, mm-hmm. I have that sitting in my Amazon cart right now. I don't want to make a purchase in the middle of a podcast because I'm worried it'll like freak out my system. But yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm Only definitely I can do that. Yeah, well, I'm hosting the Discord and the OBS and the stream itself, and uh, who knows what's going to explode <laughs> if I click the wrong button. Next book, I'm gonna. 
called uh yeah, his jab, 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 right hook. And New York Best Times, you know, bestseller and that kind of stuff. So I'm really excited about it. Basically how to tell how to tell your stories through the different social media platforms. Um, so that they, they can be the most effective. So I, I'm going to read that so that I sharpen my social media skills and then I'll pass that on to my community manager over at MC Pro Hosting. And, you know, it's, it's just a really good way for me to instill knowledge on, on the team. Yeah, you learn and you pass it down the line. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. Well, awesome. I mean, that's awesome. That's a lot of really good information. I think a lot of really good stuff. Uh, uh, People can learn from that, and also book recommendations. We don't really have book recommendations very often on this show, and I, I as someone Uh-oh. who wants to read more stuff, I actually really appreciate the shit out of that. So, uh, so thank yep. you for that. So, yep, um, so Pedro, where can people find you? Where can people find ev- all the stuff you're working on? Uh, this is your time to plug away. Oh boy, I thought I've been plugging this whole time. Yeah, but this is like the uh, concentrated plug period. Like this is, you know, this is just getting dirty now. So just go. <laughs> <laughs> So I am on uh, on Twitter. I am known as the Pedro Sparza. I just wanted to keep it something very easy to remember. Uh, I'm also on um, LinkedIn and uh, Instagram. Same thing. A LinkedIn plug. And wow. A LinkedIn <laughs> plug. Yeah. I'm. I don't know. I spend a lot of time there. That's where I find a lot of uh, Gary stuff. That in TikTok. He's he's a TikTok maniac. Um, <laughs> I'm actually on getting- LinkedIn all the damn time. It's pretty much. I open that before almost anything else these days. Yeah, I usually try to set a one hour to just spend on on link Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and Twitter, um, just so I can get caught up with anything. And then if there's any get anything I need to respond to, then I can get. I I, I usually will set aside just just one hour a day because if you're not careful, then your your life will just social media will just consume you, and then you have FOMO also that can just kick in and then just completely throw your whole mindset for the, for the rest of the, um, so I try to avoid that. Um, I have no um, idea what that's like whatsoever. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then something else, something else that I do is, uh, is a really cool trick that, that James found uh, an article for is completely black out your phone. Uh, so my phone's pretty much black and it's always on do not disturb. Um, people that don't, People, there's only a certain number of people that are allowed to call through to me. Mm. Um, my parents, obviously, uh, certain members of my family, uh, and certain workmates. But other than that, it, it, unless it's an urgent need, I, I, you're not going to interrupt my day with your phone call. If you want to text me, I'll get back to you when I feel like I've reached a good point in my specific task. Mm. Um, so it keeps me task oriented, you know. So if I'm focused on something for 30 minutes, I can get it done in 30. Not feel like I put in 15, then a 20 minute gap of, of, you know, distractions and then just keeps me productive. And then at the end of the day, I will turn it off and um, and then I'll get back to people. But um, usually if it's urgent, they, they'll find a way to reach out to me and, you know, have my in across spread out across different monitors, too. But social media, I've learned to just turn it off and then batches, batch notifications. I've turned those off completely. Um hmm. Because I've learned that those give me anxiety when I see like a circle with a, when I see a red circle with a two, I feel like it's telling me, hey, 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 <laughs> hey, take care of this, take care of it. And because I'm such an A type kind of person, I want to get it. I want to get that circle to be gone. But why should I let my phone tell me how to live my life? I mean, honestly, that's as someone who is absolutely obsessive when uh, with when I see notifications, I'm watching a show I'm enjoying. I don't want to be on my phone. Oh, there's a, a bu- there's like eight notifications. I got to scroll through these or somehow to get rid of them or I'm do I'm writing something. Oh, there's a notification. Wait, what was I writing? All those moments. I mean, honestly, having that uh, that's actually some of the best advice I've heard on like just different ways to uh, keep yourself uh, on task, which I might be taking to heart because I just ordered a new phone. So. Oh, nice. Yeah. I mean, my phone is, is, it's just, that's the home screen. Um, I have no, even the background's black because it allows me to really, it becomes a utility instead of, uh, it, it becomes my tool to use, not, not it, you know, distract me throughout the day and, and, and draw me away from my tasks. Mm-hmm. And, um, I'm going to try to find that article. I'll send it over to you. Um, yeah, please do. But it please goes do. into like, yeah, it goes into like all these different things you can do to make your, to, to make your phone something that you use, not it like ding notifications, all that stuff is gone. That's why D&D is, um, you know, and so it, it just it, it's made a huge difference in my life because it just allows me to 
focus on my tasks. Um, not saying I'm like disconnected from the world. If you need to reach me, I, you'll find a way. You know, I have my Discord pulled up here, so if if you message me, I'll I'll get. Um, but yeah, it's a it's a, it's a interesting little uh, life hack, I guess you could say. Well, cool, 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 cool. <clears throat> um, oh, okay, so finish plugging stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so LinkedIn, uh, uh, it's Pedro Sparza. Uh, Instagram and Twitter are the Pedro Sparza. Um, you'll probably see me at a lot of different gaming events and things of that. Sort. Um, but other than that, I mean, I'm usually going to be working over at MC pro hosting and, um, you're welcome to, you're welcome to reach me via social media. I, I don't, I don't get a lot of activity through there. So <laughs> if you send me a, at, if you at me there, there's a chance I'll see it and I'll most of them likely respond even if I don't follow you a particular second. Oh, cool. I heard you also do music. Is there a place I can <laughs> do that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's a, you can find me on iTunes um, and it's oh. just Pedro Esparza you should see that there I've got a couple albums up there I, I have like four more albums that I could release but I just haven't had time to go through the mixing and mastering of the rest of the music a bunch of like video game stuff I want to do an, a, a Beatles album uh, it's, it's been itching at me for a while so that might be a nice 2020 goal I think to kind of celebrate right. celebrate I- a little more me time I like these uh, this uh, surprises with Pedro we're getting. Uh, just, I, just, do. I was d- totally just trying to plug uh, music by Pedro on YouTube again, but that's, uh, that's more, and I'm like it. <laughs> <laughs> more and more with Pedro. Uh, well, awesome. I, I mean, I'm very glad we got you on the show. Uh, I'm glad also that you and I had a chance to meet in person beforehand, because I think uh, we even talked about this in person. It, 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 there's, there was more to discuss and more of an understanding of uh, styles and stuff. So I'm, I'm glad we got uh, that chance. I'm glad we pushed back, and I'm Glad you are our, uh, I, I, unless something changes somehow, you are our last like interview style podcast for 2019. So it's uh, awesome. it's a nice way to end these off with. Uh, for anyone interested, anyone who uh, is is here and interested in what we do here at Constant Calibrating, the next two weeks are going to be all uh, end of the year and end of the decade content. Uh, next week, the 10th, will be our, our best games of the decade. We're still working exactly the, the rules of it, but I think we're, it's going to be a, uh, everyone, myself, Justin, uh, so it's going to be myself, Justin, uh, returning co-host Ryan. We're going to be joined by, uh, God, I hope I say the name right, uh, Caitlin Gazro and uh, Nathan Brandt. Uh, so we're going to have a couple of guests. We're going to be talking best games of the decade. Each of us going to bring, I believe the plan is, uh, at least as of right now, we're all going to bring like 10 games, and we're just going to have a nice discussion of that. Following on the 17th will be the uh, annual Constant Calibrating Semi-Spectacular Award Show, hosted by myself and Justin, again, joined by Nathan Brandt, uh, Kate Sanchez, and uh, I believe Kevin, Kevin, Kevin Wallace, Ghost of Kevin, volunteered to be on that. Ghost? Ghost of Kevin will be here, yeah. I, 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 believe, uh, I believe he volunteered for that. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that, that's the plan for the 17th. And then we're going to be off for, because uh, it turns out uh, the, we do shows on Tuesdays and uh, it falls out on Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve. And uh, my wife will murder me if I do shows on those days. Uh, <laughs> and I don't really couldn't find time in the schedule to do like makeup shows. So we'll probably just take two weeks off. So that's uh, constant calibrating for the rest of 2019. Uh, this week, we're going to be getting all of our backlog of podcasts uh, at uh, out they're all edited in on youtube and already up on places they just just gotta click this the switch so uh if you've been waiting for stuff like that they'll be out meanwhile uh this outro is uh, a little longer than usual so sorry everyone uh but uh justin and i will be doing the catch all gaming podcast uh tomorrow night at uh at uh what time is that justin it's at uh 4 p.m pacific 7 p.m eastern talking about yeah that's the time star wars uh jedi fallen order justin might More talk gentlemen. we're gonna apparently talk about uh justin's experience with star citizen and a bunch of other things so please check that show out finally we're finally in the proper intro thank you all for joining us this week the constant calibrating podcast is live every tuesday at 4 30 p.m pacific 7 30 p.m eastern right here on mixer.com slash concalpod we're on facebook facebook.com slash constant calibrating twitter at concalpod i'm at bear punch justin is at justin underscore glorious check instagram at instagram.com slash constant calibrating and come chat with us on constant calibrating.com slash discord Please make sure to leave us a review wherever you are able to. It really does help to get the podcast in front of more listeners, even after you know nearly eight years. Uh, you know, subscribe places, leave review on Apple Podcast, 
every single one of those, even if you're not listening or watching in those places, every little every little number, every little number boosts us so more people can find us and we can do more fun shit and attend more interesting events and whatnot. And with that, my dear audience, I bid you a good sign off. <laughs>